Sleep is often labelled as one of the most important variables for muscle growth, strength and fat loss. It is claimed that poor sleep can be greatly detrimental to your fitness goals, whereas high quality sleep can greatly enhance them. But how much of an impact does sleep really have on fitness goals? Does poor sleep hinder your ability to build muscle mass? Does it limit your ability to lose body fat? And can sleep extension enhance muscle growth, strength or fat loss? First, let's look at the effects of sleep on muscle growth. As far as I am aware, there are no published studies which directly assess muscle growth outcomes via resistance training with different sleep durations. So it is difficult to conclusively say how sleep quality or quantity directly affects muscle growth with other factors equated. Instead, we can only look at some indirect factors which might help to inform us. First is that restricted sleep might inhibit our ability to train effectively. Resistance training is the stimulus for muscle growth. And if restricted sleep hinders lifting performance, it might inhibit the hypertrophy stimulus we can provide, leading to less long-term muscle growth. But how does sleep influence lifting performance? In terms of max strength, this study compared 1RM performance in weightlifters after normal sleep versus sleep deprivation. Nine collegiate national level male weightlifters performed a 1RM snatch, clean and jerk, and front squat under two conditions separated by seven days. For the first test, they slept as usual. And for the second test, they were completely sleep restricted for 24 hours. It was found that strength performance was similar in both conditions, with no significant inhibition seen from sleep deprivation. So, in terms of maximal strength, one night of poor sleep, or even a complete lack of sleep, doesn't seem to have a major effect on performance. However, the same outcome isn't observed when looking at repetition performance across multiple sets with submaximal loads. This was seen in this study, which compared lifting performance in a well-rested versus sleep-restricted state. 16 professional rugby players performed 4 sets of bench press, squats and bent over rows with 85% 1RM for as many reps as possible before reaching failure. This same workout protocol was conducted 4 times, separated by at least 3 days each workout. On 2 occasions, the athletes were well rested, defined as sleeping for at least 8 hours the previous night. On one of these occasions, caffeine was also provided prior to training, and on the other occasion, a placebo pill. And on the other two occasions, the athletes were in a sleep-deprived state, defined as sleeping for less than six hours the previous night. And again, lifting was performed with either caffeine or a placebo pill. It was found that when sleep-restricted, total workload was lower than when the athletes were well-rested. However, when caffeine was ingested while sleep-restricted, lifting performance matched the well-rested state. And when well-rested and ingesting caffeine, lifting performance was best. So, it seems that rep performance across multiple sets seems to be inhibited to a greater extent than maximal strength. And this type of training is more relevant for muscle growth. So, when sleep is restricted, we might be slightly inhibiting the hypertrophic stimulus. Another mechanism suggesting that sleep might influence muscle growth is its influence on muscle protein synthesis. Restricting sleep tends to result in lower average muscle protein synthesis rates compared with being well rested. And while muscle protein synthesis isn't a direct measure of muscle growth, it generally suggests a less anabolic state, at least during the specific time it is being measured. This was seen in this study, which assessed the influence of sleep restriction on muscle protein synthesis. 24 healthy young men underwent an 8-day sleep experiment with three different protocols. One group were given 8 hours of time in bed for all 8 days. The second group were restricted to 4 hours of time in bed for 5 of the days. And the third group were also sleep restricted but performed a high-intensity interval cycling session on 3 of the restricted sleep days. It was found that average fractional synthetic rate was lower in the restricted sleep group compared with the normal sleep group. However, this difference was eliminated when exercise was performed, even in a sleep-restricted state. So once again, this is mechanistic evidence which doesn't always correlate with actual muscle growth outcomes. However, it seems that restricting sleep tends to result in a slightly lower average muscle protein synthetic rate, possibly resulting in less muscle growth from a training program. Although, when resistance training is performed, it isn't clear as to how this would be mitigated.
And the third way that sleep might indirectly influence muscle growth is via exercise effort and adherence. A lack of sleep often makes workouts seem more effortful than they otherwise would in a well-rested state. This was seen in this study, which compared the effects of performing resistance training in a well-rested versus sleep-restricted state. 10 females with at least 6 months resistance training experience performed the following workout 4 times over a 9 day period with each workout separated by 48 hours. This was performed once with a normal sleep schedule defined as getting at least 7 hours per night as well as in a sleep restricted state with time in bed limited to 5 hours. While the workouts were identical in both cases, the perceived effort it took to complete each workout was greater in the sleep restricted state, shown in the orange, compared with the well rested state, shown in the blue. Furthermore, sleep restriction resulted in greater perceived fatigue, as we would expect. Because of this, it is possible that lifters might put less effort into workouts, such as by not pushing as close to failure, doing fewer sets than planned, skipping exercises, and so on. And even worse, it increases the likelihood that planned workouts might be missed altogether. So while a single night of poor sleep probably isn't going to completely ruin your training routine, chronically restricted sleep might inhibit training effort and adherence long term. So while we don't have direct evidence assessing the effects of sleep on muscle growth, it seems that restricted sleep might have detrimental effects. Muscle growth can still be achieved, even with poor sleep, but the magnitude of muscle growth we experience is likely to be inhibited if this is a chronic issue. This could be due to inhibited lifting performance, reduced muscle protein synthesis rates, and a lower effort and adherence to a training program. Although these issues are probably more of a concern for chronically restricted sleep more so than a few nights of sporadically poor sleep. The next fitness goal that sleep might influence is fat loss. For fat loss, the most important consideration is adhering to a calorie deficit over time. And sleep doesn't change this energy balance equation, meaning that if you adhere to a calorie deficit, weight loss will be achieved, regardless of your sleep quality and quantity. However, sleep might influence the proportion of fat loss achieved during weight loss, as well as our ability to adhere to a calorie deficit. While a calorie deficit will successfully result in body weight loss over time, we ideally want to lose as much body fat as possible and preserve as much muscle mass as possible. And it seems that restricted sleep might influence the proportion of muscle mass versus body fat that is lost during weight loss. There are only two studies I am aware of which directly assess the influence of sleep on body composition during weight loss. The first is this one, which assessed the effects of sleep restriction on body composition during weight loss. 10 overweight adults consumed a calorie intake of 90% of their predicted metabolic rate on two separate 14 day periods. On one occasion, they were permitted 8.5 hours in bed, and on the other occasion, they were only allowed 5.5 hours of time in bed, with the goal of restricting sleep. It was found that after both interventions, total weight lost was similar. However, the participants lost a greater amount of fat-free mass during the restricted sleep condition compared with the normal sleep condition. This also meant that when sleeping longer, subjects experienced greater fat loss compared with when sleep was restricted. And the other study we have looked at a similar concept. 36 overweight or obese adults consumed a calorie intake of 95% of their predicted metabolic rate for 8 weeks. One group slept normally during the diet, which ended up being around 6.5 hours per night. The other group were instructed to reduce their total time in bed by 90 minutes from their habitual sleep habits 5 days of the week, and then sleep as normal on the other 2 days. This group ended up sleeping for an average of 5.5 hours per night on the restricted sleep days and around 7.5 hours on the non-restricted days. After 8 weeks, both groups lost a similar amount of total body weight. And in both cases, the proportion of fat mass and lean mass that was lost was similar too. So although the evidence is pretty weak at this stage, it seems that restricting sleep might have a slight detrimental effect on fat loss. More specifically, we are likely to lose a little more muscle mass during weight loss and therefore lose a little less body fat. Although there are two specific details worth mentioning. First is that this was only found to be the case when sleep was restricted consistently for multiple weeks as seen in the first study. 
When subjects were given more sleep on two of the days, body composition changes weren't as detrimental. And as we saw, people tend to catch up on lost sleep by sleeping a little longer than usual after sleep restriction. And second is that there was no resistance training being performed in either study. Since resistance training is the primary stimulus for muscle growth, we would expect much more favorable body composition changes with or without sleep restriction. So it is unclear how much of these effects would be mitigated when resistance training is included. And probably the more impactful way in which sleep might influence fat loss is via its effects on appetite and adherence to a calorie deficit. Sleep appears to influence hunger and satiety levels, and this seems to subsequently influence our calorie intake in a free living setting. For example, this study compared the effects of sleep deprivation on hormonal indicators of hunger and satiety. 44 healthy young adults had their leptin and ghrelin hormones measured on two separate occasions. High leptin levels are an indicator of satiety, while high ghrelin levels are an indicator of hunger. On one occasion, blood samples were taken after one night of complete sleep deprivation, and on the other occasion, after one night with eight hours of time in bed. It was found that average leptin levels were decreased after sleep deprivation, and ghrelin levels were increased. This would indicate that hunger was greater and satiety was lower after sleep deprivation compared with being well rested. And this also appears to translate to how many calories we intake in a free living setting. This was seen in this study, which explored the effects of sleep restriction on food intake. 12 healthy adults underwent two separate 14 day periods of controlled time in bed with unlimited access to food throughout the day. On one occasion, they were restricted to four hours of time in bed for 14 consecutive days. And on the other occasion, they were given nine hours of time in bed to compare the difference. It was found that during the sleep restriction phase, subjects ate an average of about 250 calories more compared with when they were given more sleep. So it seems that restricting sleep tends to result in consuming more total calories. This might be a result of increased hunger and suppressed satiety, or possibly by other mechanisms we haven't explored. But in any case, this is going to make it less likely for us to adhere to a calorie deficit over time, which is the most important consideration to achieve substantial fat loss. The next topic to move on to is performance. There are many different types of performance outcomes, but in general, sleep loss tends to impair performance of all outcomes to some extent although the magnitude of impairment seems to differ between performance outcomes. This meta-analysis compiled the data assessing the effects of sleep loss on various different performance outcomes. This graph shows the overall effect of sleep restriction on all performance outcomes. As we can see, sleep restriction has an overall small negative effect on performance, with greater sleep restriction resulting in greater performance decrements. Furthermore, the authors also compared the effects of sleep loss between different performance outcomes. These were classified into seven different categories, with definitions and examples of each provided in this table. It was found that sleep loss affected maximal strength and speed and power endurance the least. Endurance, intermittent endurance, and aerobic power were affected to a slightly greater magnitude. Strength endurance was affected significantly, and skill performance was inhibited to the largest magnitude. And the last relevant category we will touch on is the impact of sleep on our emotional state. While this isn't directly related to any of the fitness goals, it can certainly have an impact on enjoyment, sustainability, and long-term adherence to diet and exercise routines. In general, poor quality or quantity of sleep tends to promote negative emotions and reduce positive emotions. This was established in this meta-analysis, which aimed to analyze the influence of sleep loss on emotions. It was found that across 154 studies, sleep deprivation, restriction, or fragmentation generally had a negative effect on emotional state. Poor sleep tends to result in less positive emotions, greater negative emotions, greater general mood disturbances, lower arousal, and increased anxiety and depression. Most of the evidence we have looked at looks at the impacts of sleep restriction on outcomes. However, can increasing your habitual sleep quality or quantity further enhance fitness goals? Well, it isn't entirely clear at this stage since there isn't all that much evidence on the topic as it relates to body composition and strength. However, there is a small body of evidence exploring the effects of sleep extension on athletic performance. 
This systematic review aimed to evaluate the effects of sleep extension on various kinds of athletic performance. In terms of cognitive performance, sleep extension strategies mostly had positive effects. For physical performance, the results were mixed. Napping showed a positive effect in some studies, but no effect in other studies. Although studies implementing sleep extension, mindfulness, and light-based interventions all showed positive performance outcomes. So overall, the researchers concluded that increasing sleep duration can have a small positive effect on cognitive or physical performance in some cases. Extending your habitual sleep by around 1-2 to two hours seems to be enough to elicit these benefits. And probably most practically beneficial is that napping during the day can help to restore performance decrements if you underwent a poor night of sleep. So while this isn't directly relevant for hypertrophy, strength or fat loss, it has some indirect inferences. Extending your habitual sleep habits might have a small positive effect for lifting performance. And long term, this might help us to provide a superior training stimulus resulting in greater muscle growth, strength gains and possibly fat loss. In summary, let's establish some practical recommendations. In terms of muscle growth, it isn't entirely clear how much of an impact sleep has since there is no direct evidence comparing different sleep interventions on muscle growth via resistance training. However, restricted sleep seems to have a small detrimental effect on hypertrophy-style lifting performance, causes a small decrease in muscle protein synthesis rates, and can make training sessions more effortful. In terms of fat loss, there is some evidence showing that chronically restricted sleep might slightly increase the proportion of muscle mass lost during weight loss and therefore result in slightly less fat loss. It also seems to increase appetite and result in a higher calorie intake, making it less likely to adhere to a calorie deficit. For performance goals, restricted sleep seems to inhibit all outcomes. Although some outcomes are affected to a larger extent, like skill performance, while others are affected to a lesser extent, like maximal strength. And one of the biggest impacts that we find sleep restriction to have is on emotional state. Poor sleep generally increases negative mood states, such as feelings of anxiety and depression, and decreases the prevalence of positive mood states. Furthermore, extending our regular sleep schedule generally improves both cognitive and physical performance to a small extent. This can be done by sleeping for a longer duration or by implementing napping during the day. Although it isn't clear at this stage if these performance benefits enhance our ability to build muscle mass or reduce body fat. So overall, restricted sleep seems to have a generally negative effect on most fitness goals. I would say that the biggest concern is via its impact on emotion and behavior rather than the physiological or performance effects. Restricted sleep usually results in putting less effort into exercise, makes exercise more effortful, and increases the likelihood of missing planned workouts. Furthermore, it can increase appetite, usually results in a higher calorie intake, and decreases our motivation to stick with our goals, making it more difficult to stick with our diet strategy. And lastly, it seems that the negative effects of sleep restriction are most pronounced with chronically poor sleep rather than acute sleep loss. In other words, a single night of poor sleep might not be all that impactful, but multiple consecutive nights of poor sleep is likely to have a greater negative effect on various fitness goals. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Check out flowhighperformance.com for online coaching, training templates, ebooks and more.